Crystal took a deep breath and leaned in. She almost barfed in her mouth when she saw the mountain of poo. It took a few attempts to get the key on the tooth hook, but eventually she managed to pull it up. As Crystal exited the outhouse, the house blocked itself from the inside. Crystal picked up the scissors. They would probably come in handy. The ladder was surprisingly light, so Krista didn't mind carrying it with her. The box had a three-number combination lock on it. Crystal had entered the correct code, and the lock opened. Inside the box was a handgun. Crystal carefully picked it up. It was best she didn't show it to anyone.
So it turned out Strong Girl was not the thief. But her late night activities at least explained why the napkin note was covered in chocolate. It was time to confront the bear woman. Crystal noticed something moving in the corner of her eye. It looked like the bear woman's headpiece was dragging along the floor. It must be the cat, she figured. But it was moving so slowly. Was it sick? She turned around and saw that it was, in fact, the bear woman's headpiece on the floor. She lifted it from the ground, and a rat stared back at her under the headpiece. It squeaked loudly and ran off. Crystal was in shock. Why was the rat trying to get away with the bear woman's headpiece? The rat leaped towards the exit. 
but it got away again. At least this time, Crystal saw it jump down the well. The pylon was rusty and looked like it could collapse at any moment. The pylon was rusty and looked like it could collapse at any moment. The flag was attached to a long, sturdy rope, but it was entangled at the top of the pole. It was a Gordian knot only a pair of scissors could sort out. Crystal climbed to the top and cut loose the rope. Even though the bad weather, she was spellbound by the view. From up there, she could see everything. The trees, the lakes, the mountains. Soon she would go to all these places with the boy. Her attention drifted away for a moment. She lost her grip and fell. This was the end, she thought. When she hit the ground, she would shatter into a million pieces. Crystal embraced the impact. The impact was soft. She had landed on the giant teddy bear and safely slided down to the ground. Crystal tied the rope to the top of the well and climbed down. Crystal touched the inside of the wall. There was a draft coming from a crack in the structure. She leaned against the wall thinking how she would solve this puzzle. Then the wall caved in by the pressure of her weight. The situation indeed looked grim for Crystal. Then a majestic creature leaped into the scene.
As the rats ran off into the shadows and Crystal picked up the ringmaster's hat, she noticed something else on the ground. It was a stack of documents. While she couldn't read the text, her curiosity was piqued by the butterfly emblem in the bottom right corner. Maybe someone could decipher it for her. But she had a feeling she had to be careful with whom she showed it to. The gates to the sewers were kept shut by a combination lock. Apparently, the ringmaster was so scared of spiders that he couldn't even watch. The spider also seemed intimidated and crawled back in under the hat. The ringmaster was still covering his eyes. Now was a good time to take the car keys. The spider could wait. Little did the ringmaster consider that Crystal was the girl of glass, and like a bull in a china shop, he knocked her over. Crystal hit her head against the desk, but she was more shocked than hurt. Crystal got the car keys, but she had messed up royally. She didn't mean all those things she said. She had just been caught up in the moment. But what could she do? It was too late to take it back. She tried not to think about it.
The boy looked under the hood to inspect the engine one last time before they drive off. So the plan was to access the outhouse from beneath, but she had to find appropriate footwear before she could enter the sewers. It was a simple pot made of ceramics. While ceramic was heavy and looked sturdy, for a moment she was happy that she was the girl of glass and the pitchfork had strangely reminded Crystal of the light. The merry-go-round had reminded Crystal of the mechanic who used to live at the circus. The two of them got along well, 
and the mechanic used to let Crystal ride the merry-go-round after the circus had closed for the day. Now the big chunk of metal just stood there as a monument of what the circus used to be. The bear woman dove right into the crime section. The bear woman was too busy reading the newspaper to notice Crystal taking the loaf. Crystal could hear faint sobbing from inside the ringmaster's apartment. Her stomach hurt. She didn't know what to do. But she couldn't keep the boy waiting much longer. Crystal found it odd that the old generator Crystal had the code to the combination lock, but the sewage tunnel floor was too nasty for her to walk in with her regular shoes. She would need more appropriate footwear. The goose had moved into the circus the same day as Crystal arrived. It was probably just a coincidence. What did fill Crystal with wonder, however, was how it got there, because she had never seen it fly. Most of the time, it just sat on the roof and gazed out over the horizon. Crystal imagined it was missing its family.
Crystal could hear a faint. Her stomach hurt, but she couldn't keep the boy with The only thing inside the ticket booth was the footstool the ringmaster used to reach over the counter. That, and a tip jar with two popsicle sticks. Crystal climbed the ladder and crawled through the hole in the tent roof. Then she crawled out on the beam as if there was no tomorrow. She managed to grab the Wellingtons. But as if she was cursed, she once again lost her balance and fell. This time, there was no soft teddy bear to land on. But there happened to be an unusually tall lady there to catch her. Neither Crystal knew what to say. At least she had the Wellingtons. She put them on. Crystal entered the code the boy had read from the rebel document. The combination lock made a clicking sound and opened. And the Wellingtons kept her feet dry. Crystal was in luck. As the rebel document had suggested, the outhouse hole was accessible from the other side of the tunnel. But between her and the hole was a large alligator. Crystal's plan was to tickle the alligator, but she was not stupid enough to use her own hands for it.
Crystal had nothing more to say to Lola, the tall lady, but she felt good about connecting with her. Crystal had nothing to say to the bear woman for now. She had a rat to catch. Crystal had nothing else to say to Otto, the clown, but she felt good about hearing him out. Crystal had no good reason to bother the bear woman. Crystal put a piece of bread on the hood to attract the goose. It worked. The goose carefully jumped down from the roof. Crystal gently plucked a tail feather from the goose. Crystal put the feather next to the alligator, but how would it use it? Its arms were too short. Crystal carefully walked past the alligator. The smell was awful but she took another deep breath and heaved herself up.
Indeed it was, but the lamp had been on all night and completely drained the battery. She figured she could use the generator to charge it. Crystal knew exactly what had to be done, and she approached the generator with confidence. Crystal connected the battery to the generator to charge it. Turns out she had no idea what she was doing after all. The generator made a violent poof sound and died. She had managed to blow a fuse. Still, no problem, she thought. She just had to climb the pylon to access the fuse box. Crystal climbed the pylon and successfully replaced the busted fuse. Then she safely climbed down and put her feet on the ground. No time for more accidents, she thought. But as the old saying goes, don't count your chickens before they hatch. The last thing she heard was a deafening crackling noise. She wasn't sure if it was she who had shattered, or if the world had ended. Everything was black. This was exactly what Crystal had wanted since the day she arrived at the circus. Yet, it did nothing but tie knots in her stomach. Crystal looked at their smiling faces. Was this the last time she saw them? Strangely, she felt closer to them than ever before. But it was too late to back out now. She could not stop thinking about the boy. He must be wondering what happened to her. Crystal could still hear their voices inside. They seemed happy. She was too late. The boy was gone. Crystal left the battery by the car and returned to the caravan. It had been a long day, and all the enthusiasm had left her like the air escapes an old balloon. But it wasn't all bad. She had gotten to know the circus crew a little better. Sure, they had their flaws, but so did Crystal. Perhaps she belonged in the circus, after all. Tomorrow she would apologize to those she had been hard on and show more appreciation, she told herself. And the ringmaster had announced that the circus would start traveling, so she would get a change of surroundings anyway. Before falling asleep, Crystal was remarkably content. 
Maybe things had turned out for the best in the end. Crystal awoke by a familiar voice. She called out, but no one answered. When she heard the disembodied voice again, she assumed she was dreaming, but she was not. This was the second night in a row she had entered a realm between the dream world and her own, and this would not be the last time. Her nightly visits were meant to prepare her for what was to come, but she was not yet ready. She called out to the disembodied voice again, but it did not answer her. Then she saw the bear woman in her usual position, only that this was not the bear woman. The being, which only shared appearance with the bear woman, was shuffling a deck of cards. Crystal felt a strange force pulling her towards the table. The being did not answer Crystal either, and instead placed four tarot cards on the table. The tower, the moon, the lovers, and temperance. Crystal had never read tarot cards before, but strangely they spoke to her. The tower warned of disaster. The only disaster she could think of was the sheriff, and they had averted that by agreeing to leave the area. The moon represented fear and anxiety. Again, Crystal was confused. She was less anxious now than before, and she had nothing to fear. The lovers sang of relationship and union. Could it mean the tall lady and the ringmaster would end up together? It certainly didn't mean her and the boy. He was gone, and she wasn't even sure she had feelings for him in the first place. Temperance meant patience and purpose. This one Crystal could relate to. She had definitely displayed patience over the last couple of years, but a purpose she had not found yet. Maybe that would come to her now. After all four cards had been placed on the table, the being made pairs of them while never breaking eye contact with Crystal. As the being stared into Crystal's eyes, the room became shrouded in darkness. From the tarot cards, strange creatures spawned, and they lined up as if they were going to fight each other. Crystal understood it was a game, and then the rules just came to her. She was expected to exploit the weaknesses and strengths of each creature. Fire was weak to stone, but strong against ice. Water was strong against ice, but weak to stone.
Crystal did well. She had defeated the bear woman looking being in this strange game. Soon her presence in this world began to fade. The goose did not cry this morning. Crystal awoke by herself. She had overslept. Everyone else had already left the caravan. Then she remembered that today was the day they would become a traveling circus. She jumped out of bed with excitement. <laughs> 